Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Garibaldi Red podcast on this Wednesday afternoon. And it is nice to be talking about a Forest win for once. Forest beating Fulham three goals to one. An excellent first half performance, an emphatic first half performance. And Forest saw it out in the second. Of course, Fulham getting one back. And it was a little bit nervy at times, but we did it. We never make it easy. It's Forest. Come on. Um, so it is It is a much needed win for Forest. Forest and we're out the relegation zone at more points back. The four points back, uh, you know, the four points get deducted from Forest, but we get them back in two games. And that magnificent banner before the game that said to shut out the noise with Morgan Gibbs White certainly did work for the team and it worked for Morgan as well. An incredible performance from him to discuss the game and lots more. Joined by, first of all, Max Scott, a broadcaster for TalkSport. Very good, Max. I saw some stuff you did for TalkSport the other week. It was excellent on Forest, mate. Hey, you're flying the flag high at the minute. How are you? Yeah, and, and... I try, I, yeah, I try to, mate. Um, appreciate <laughs> it. And it's lovely to be talking to you both after a win. I mean, yeah. Who'd have thought? thought? Yeah, who'd have thought? Strange. <laughs> An Easter miracle has come true, albeit a bit later. Uh, also joined by Sarah Clapson, who uh, has joined us last minute, actually, Sarah. So <laughs> you like... Uh, Late standing. Like... Yeah, you like, I was about to say Chris Wood, but he started recently. Um, <laughs> you like, ah, I can't, I can't think of a player. Um, <laughs> You're just a player that comes on in the last minute and and, and always seems Thanks to Thanks to glory. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's discuss the game. And, and we'll start with you, Sarah. Um, just just kind of what a win and, and, and sort of how you're feeling after that. Because um, just just so big, we talk about kind of, you know, these cup finals being being left in the season. It really was one last night and, and Forrest did the job and, and did it in style, didn't they? Yeah, I think it was it was almost a must win game before. Not not technically, but I think being at home on the back of that Palace performance and, and result, it, it was really it was the kind of night where you thought it was capable of being special. Tuesday night under the lights at the city ground, it always has that kind of feel about it. But the way things have been going, you kind of wondered, is it gonna is it gonna happen? Is the performance gonna happen on the pitch? Are the players gonna step up? Are they gonna respond? Is the crowd gonna respond? And that first half was, was just sensational. From the first minute to, to the last, it was just absolutely brilliant. Incredible to watch. Some really, really good performances. A lot of standouts. But the second half, I think, was just as impressive for me in how Forrest saw it out and the way they managed it and the way Nuno used his substitutions because it's something he's come in for a bit of criticism for. His starting lineup has come in for a bit of criticism as well. But I think last night he got it right. He got the lineup right and he got his subs right. The way that Forrest, it wasn't without his nerves and its tension and it, and its kind of hold your breath moments for sure. But seeing it out and getting the three points, it should be a huge confidence boost. It should be the start of um, a bit of momentum, the start of a run. And that's what it's got to be. It's, it's no good getting that result, putting in that kind of performance and then going back to playing the way they were or... or been a bit um not on the as much on the front foot difficult at Spurs I know in the next game but they've mm -hmm. got to take a lot from it they've got to build on it they've got to use that now and and keep it going um, and that way it'll count for something otherwise it, it just becomes one of those moments where you you hope it means something but you don't know until the end of the season yeah, exactly. Big win, but you're right. You need to kind of take it into to the next cup final uh, now as such. Uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube, by the way. So if you want to get your comments in, uh, then feel free to do so. If you were there at the game last night, what did you make of it? Man of the match, standout performances, all of that. We welcome that. Uh, Max, when you kind of look at that performance last night and, and, and Sarah mentions kind of key players and and, and and it just being excellent. It's almost what we've been crying out for as fans. You know, the 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 club put that you know brilliant video up last week of almost saying to the fans to bring the noise. And then there was this expectation, I think, recently of, well, let's see the players bring the performance and 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 ultimately bring the win. And they did that last night, and it was important, so important. Yeah, you know, there's always a bit of a cliche about games like this, uh, uh, you know, towards the end of the season, if you're in a relegation fight, you know, the phrase is always um, sort of wheeled out by people like us, like, you know, this this is the sort of game that could change the course of the season. It's the sort of game that if they win this, you know, that sort of uh, that cliches that we get paid to sort of write and say. But ultimately, I, I really, 
I really feel that the first half performance was so good, was so dominant and was so thrilling that I really do think that that result has the power, if you like, or the ability to change the course of our season. I mean, Fulham are a really impressive side. Marco Silva's done a fantastic job. It's no, you know, no surprise that we we understand that Maranakis, Maranakis at some point has been interested in potentially bringing him in as a manager. Um, and so they're no slouches. And to be able to absolutely tear apart a, a Fulham side that have been really impressive is a real testament to to the side, to Nuno. Like Sarah said, I think he got it right the way he set the, the side up. But I really just feel it was that good. I was, I, you know, I've had a few pelters from some of my colleagues today because I said there were moments in that first half where it reminded me of prime Barcelona. Now, <laughs> I say that slightly, you know, with, with some slight exaggeration, but Morgan Gibbs-White was absolutely majestic. He was mercurial. And we know that he's capable of doing what he did. But p- perhaps this season, something has been missing, right, in his performance, maybe that that final ball. And, you know, Forza Garibaldi, hats off for an absolutely captivating display, which I think really just set the standard and set the tone for Morgan Gibbs-White to have what I think was his best performance in a Forest shirt, certainly this season, potentially since he's joined us. And um, what a relief. And like I said, I really think that it can, can can change the course of this season for us, certainly. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Simon says on Facebook, Ola Anya and William were f- w- Williams were fantastic uh, last night. As with the whole team, uh, every Fulham cor- uh, every corner Fulham won, won was scary. I mean, it wouldn't be Forest without conceding uh, from a set piece, but we won't really touch on that today because we get sick of talking about it. Um, Sarah, when you look at a player like Morgan and as Max said there and, and and that brilliant display and you could see him on the TV kind of looking up to the trend end. Must have done his confidence the world of good almost seeing that and he said in in his interview with Colin Frey how it was quite a touching moment and mm. and just a player like him, he comes alive in those games and, and, and a special night at the city ground and that's what that's what Forrest ultimately paid the price tag for. It was a price tag that was criticised at the time but you can understand why Forrest paid that now. Oh, I mean, it looks a bargain, doesn't it? The, yeah. the more he delivers and the more he keeps playing like that. You could see him looking up at the display beforehand. And I'm, I'm sure it gave him that little bit extra. I mean, he doesn't need any motivation anyway. He showed in the, the second half on Saturday that he wants to be the main man. He, he yeah. thrives on having that responsibility, on, on being at the centre of everything, of pulling the strings, of having the spotlight on him. That's why he takes the responsibility for, for free kicks and corners. You could argue maybe somebody else deserves a go at that. And that's probably a, a separate debate. But I think he enjoys it. He enjoys having that responsibility on his shoulders and he uses it. And when he puts in a performance like that, uh, the more responsibility you give him, the better. Because he'll respond. He'll step up. It lifts him. He he, he sticks his chest out. He, he holds himself higher and he, he just goes for it. He was unplayable at times in that first half. He was just sensational to watch. and. The more he keeps playing like that, the better. And the the more eyes are are going to be on him. I mean, there's already a lot of talk about him anyway. And I'm sure if he keeps putting in that kind of performance, then it's only going to develop further. But he's the kind of player that isn't bothered about that. He he just, I think he enjoys it even. He enjoys people talking about him and and revelling in how good he is. Um, And he can get even better. I think that's probably the the most exciting part about it that he's still got so much more to give he's still so pretty young albeit he's one of the more experienced heads in the dressing room now um but he's a leader as well I think that's what what I really like about him um he saw at full time afterwards he he'd got up off the bench punched the air having celebrated the win but then he went round and he, he congratulated all his teammates and you could see him calling out some of them like saying over to Matt Sells come here come here I want to say well done and going around giving hugs out and he's a real team player he's I think he said in one of his interviews afterwards that it was just another game from for him um and I think he was maybe being slightly modest there and a bit of an understatement because it was definitely not another game um but he's all round contribution he's it's just sensational um and that was I'm, I'm so glad he got a goal to go with it because it 
it just capped off that first half. It would have been brilliant anyway, um, but to get a goal as well just was the cherry on top of the cake for him. Yeah, for sure. And and just the atmosphere and and, and that first half felt so special. And it was, I remember looking to my dad and saying, Forrest are three and up. You know, it was before the referee blew his whistle for half time. And it's been a while. In fact, I think that's the second time in Premier League history for Forrest. Mm. I was reading last night that we were three nil up at half time. It, it doesn't come a lot and it hasn't certainly at this season. Just touching on Morgan quickly again, Max, before we move on. Do you think yeah. it could be argued that if Morgan was playing for a top six side or Forrest were a top six side, that England and Southgate would be taking a closer look at him? It's, you know, it's often talked about in modern day football, that there's this almost bias towards the top six in terms of players being selected through the England ranks and sometimes justifiable given the quality of the likes of Foden, etc. and Bellingham. But when you look at a player like Morgan for Forrest, surely, he, you know, there's somebody at the FA, there's somebody in that setup watching him and thinking he'd be a great player. Yeah, and look, Morgan's been a part of the setup with Southgate before and so there's no doubt that He's, you know, Southgate considers him to be some, some, somewhat of a prospect for the future. Look, last night he was sensational, um, like we've described, but there have been issues with him in terms of cons consistency of those sort of very top levels, but he's no doubt capable of it. And, you know, with, with no disrespect to the club that we love, but he is playing for a, a club that's fighting for their lives in the Premier League. And I think he carries that responsibility, like Sarah's been saying, so well, and he relishes in that. There's no doubt Morgan Gibbs White is um, is a top six caliber player, and I think if you put him um, in any of those sides, he wouldn't look out of place. And I think there are certain sides, you know, like Manchester United, who still struggle to, I think, have that character um, that that clubs like Forest have at their best. I think he, I think he'd fit perfectly in there. You know, um, I know that he's not got the experience or the international pedigree. But at his best, I you know, I don't think there's any difference between him and someone like Bruno Fernandes whatsoever. Um, that's just my personal opinion. But I think that, um, you know, he's incredibly impressive and he will have an England career at some point. And I think Forest fans are already resigned to the fact that, you know, if Forest are going to continue to want to um, have a sustainable financial approach to the game, then Morgan Gibbs-White is likely going to be someone that we're going to, going to have to sell. Um, in order to make sure that we um, don't fall foul of any more rules. Of course, we hope we hope that's not the case and maybe there's a will that that doesn't happen. Um, but he's destined for greatness. And I think, unfortunately, his stock is rising far quicker than Forrest at the minute. You know, it's going to take us a, a long time to establish and become maybe the likes of Brighton or Aston Villa. That's going to take a long time. But Morgan Gibbs, why, as much as I think he loves the club, is going to, uh, I think, want success sooner. Um, but what I love about Morgan Gibbs, right, Max, the last thing I'll say is what other player could come from another team and sort of be adopted so quickly as, as one of our own? You know, we're a side that's lost people like Joe Worrell, people like um, Brennan Johnson. Ryan Yates is the only player, I think, that is from that promotion winning side. Certainly the only homegrown player that's really left in there. And Morgan Gibbs White feels like that. And for him, you know, 18 months after joining or whatever, to have his own display, um, I think he's the perfect mixture of modern football and sort of old school football. He plays with sort of the bit between his, his teeth and a chip on his shoulder. And um, But he has this fantastic technical ability. You know, that that turn and sort of one-touch turn outside of the boot through ball to Callum hudson Adoy for the first goal was exceptional. So, um, you know, I could talk all day about Morgan Gibbs-White, but in answer to your question, yes, I think that he's capable of playing for England. And yes, I think he'll have an England career. Just yeah, on well, that, what I would say is that he was really close last season. He was he was definitely in Gareth Southgate's thinking. Yeah. And I think he was he was very close to getting a call-up at some point. What the difference is between him and, and some of the other players that are competing for that position is goals. Mm. Previously, he hasn't got a lot of goals. I think under Nuno, we started to get more. If he can keep adding that to his game, I think that's what's going to maybe make the difference in terms of getting a, a call up. Um, he's yeah, certainly capable I, of it. Because last night, I think, showed what we know he's all capable and capable of. And maybe why sometimes in, in the stands that you get people get a bit fr fr um, frustrated too quickly with Morgan because they know what mm. he's capable of. And so what he did showed last night is what um, is him at his very best. And you're right, Sarah, I think that's really what he needs to add. Sometimes that final ball and that final finish, you know, he could easily be a 10-goal 
you know, mm. minimum 10 goal a, a season midfielder for sure. Yeah, just incredible. And and yeah, you're right, Sarah. It's quite an interesting point, actually, that with the the, the, the goals and, and something he has lacked and, and, and probably a part of his game that, that himself and the Forest coaching staff know he needs to improve. We'll touch on a few more players. I mean, so many standout performances last night for Forest. This comment from Mark, having Ola Anya back is huge with the performance mm-hmm. last night. Not only is he good on the ball, but his electric pace massively helps... <sighs> Really, a player, Sarah, you know, came back for Forest from AFCON, someone that was not under the radar as such, but was almost coming good for Forest, and then AFCON happened. Having him back, having his pace, having, again, he's a bit of a character around the dressing room as well. We mm. see him in videos post-game in the dressing room, smiling, joking. That's vital for Forrest, and not just that off the pitch, but his technical ability on the ball and his pace. Mm. It's just, it's just, it's almost lightning quick for Forrest at the minute. Yeah, it was very. He was very good last night. I think both um, fullbacks were. Nico Williams is in a, a real purple patch at the moment, and having two, both fullbacks playing really well, that made a massive difference. Both got forward really well. Both used the ball pretty well, but also pretty solid defensively as well, which which helps massively. Um, Aina had a really good first half of the season. Um, he, he he came in and. Remember, he showed his pace against Manchester City in that game and he just looked brilliant. Looked a great signing. Um, AFCON kind of disrupted that a little bit um, in that obviously he went away for a bit and, and kind of affected, got an injury, came back, wasn't um, able to get straight back in the side. So not that I, uh, Harry Toffolo is a really steady defender at, at left back. I think he, he, does a, he does a job. But having that bit more going forward, when you're trying to get on the front foot and play with intent and play with a bit of pace and try to get at teams, it just adds that little extra when you've got somebody like Ola Aina in. Nuno Tavares, I think, was starting to show that as well before he unfortunately picked up an injury. Um, it just shows what a difference fullbacks can make in, in the modern game and how important they are. Having two that can really bomb on and can put crosses in. Nico Williams came close to getting on the score sheet last night. It just helps. Um, the more players you've got chipping in, it, it just makes a massive difference. It takes some of the pressure off the attacking players and just frees them up a bit as well, creates space, creates more problems for the opposition. I think Aina is having him back is, is really important. Having a fairly fully fit squad in general is pretty important at this stage of the season. You need options. Yeah, yeah, Forest do. Forest need depth going into the huge remaining games, and and given that players will mainly, you know, m- more likely get maybe tired and an injury strain potentially, you kind of need those players that that will help Forest get over the line and ultimately secure survival. But Forest a step closer after yesterday, three points outside the relegation zone now, uh, and of course we have those four points back pretty much from the Premier League because Forest got the draw against Palace and then a win last night. Uh, Max, before we can. Kind of touch on more players and, and, and single some out. Wanted to kind of touch on Nuno and a lot of criticism came in for him last week and me and Mark discussed about it and 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 fair criticism as well because it was one win in 11. It wasn't good enough for Forrest, yeah. but he got the side spot on last night. He got pretty much everything spot on tactically. And it is a manager that I do feel, and, and Dave actually mentioned this on the last podcast we did, that if he keeps Forrest up, if he almost creates that bond with the fans, given that he'll secure our Premier League survival with him at the helm, you feel like it could come good next season. And there's a lot of talk about him being the right manager. What do you make of him at the moment? And, you know, the team selection last night and almost finding that consistency as well. Well, long may it continue. It was... It- yeah, you know, we should praise Nuno for that. Um, it's been difficult for him. I've spoken on here before about the fact that, you know, really difficult club to come into. Um, four points deduction, iconic manager left, bit of a power vacuum. Um, so, yeah, no doubt he's had um, a difficult hand dealt to him. I think lots of fans could have picked that side a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, though, he sees much more. He's at the helm. Um so I'm almost reluctant to give him too much praise for the for the team selection. But in terms of setting that, I mean, but the way we played, no one would have expected that. And so he deserves so much credit for the way that he set up those players. Um, look, who did? Yeah, I think um, I heard that Morgan Gibbs-White has, it was on commentary last night. Obviously, I'm in London. I couldn't go to the game. 
Morgan, um, the commentator was saying at the end of the game how Morgan speaks really highly of Nuno and how he's really underrated. And I do think that, you know, in the fickle footballing world that we all occupy, you know, our, our memories are so short, aren't they? And we forget sometimes uh, very quickly. And, you know, we forget that he had a two back-to-back seven, consecutive seventh-place finishes for Wolves, I think it was. You know, that's that's no mean feat for... Um, with respect to Wolves, a club like Wolves, who are in a similar situation to us, I'd, you know, it'd be great if um, it'd be great if he stuck around. He obviously first kept us up, and, and we could build with him. But something tells me that um, it, w- our club isn't set up that way. You know that there's going to be a summer of rumours. You know, there's already been stuff about Maurizio Sarri. I know that some of those rumours have been rubbish, but the fact that they're even in the media in the first place, as a fan, not as somebody that works in the media, but as a fan is so frustrating because you think you're putting even more pressure on Nuno, who is quite reserved and sometimes you wonder, is the pressure getting too much to him? Um, I'm sure it's not. But Max, you know, I don't always get too too carried away with just this one beautiful as it was yeah. victory because I just think that, I, you know, I'm only speculating. I have no reason to suggest this. I don't have any inside sources. I just worry that there would be a, a you know, a... a sort of shoot from the hip sort of change at the end of the season that wouldn't surprise me you know so I don't think we can ever to think too far ahead in terms of management but it would be ideal because I think these are you know he's uh he's got a good pedigree good experience I'll never forget when I was sat in a maths GCSE revision class and I looked at my phone and it was Martin O'Neill was sacked and then about two minutes later uh, Sabri Lamucci was announced as a replacement that was it's never a dull day supporting Forrest or, or for <laughs> For you, Sarah, reporting what on. What were you Forrest. doing, looking at your phone in school? <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. Oh, tell me off, yeah. Tell me. No, in fact, <laughs> yeah. in fact, I actually think it was school. Yeah, God, that feels ages away. Uh, ages <laughs> but, when, away. but when we look at when we look at the forest time under under our owner, um, it you know Steve Cooper has been the longest serving manager, hasn't he? And that mm. you know, actually in Premier League in in modern day terms, it's probably quite a long time. But you know, we have a history of hiring and firing. And so I don't think that that will necessarily change. Um, I'm not preempting anything, but it just wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah. Yeah, mm. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see indeed. Uh, Andrew says, if we can play with the same intensity and passion as we did last night against Spurs and the rest of the games, we should be as safe as possible. Just hope that we'll start with the same team because they work better together and deserve the chance to play at mm. the weekend. Uh, Gregory says, Chris Wood's our best striker. Tyro is past it. Uh, this one there with an interesting comment. Uh, people are overlooking how much Nuno has tightened up the defence. No team, including Liverpool and Man United, have now scored more than one goal against us in the the last six games. That's an interesting stat, actually. Didn't know mm. that one. Um, yeah, very interesting about kind of and 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 a, and a good point about Nuno at tightening up the defence as well. Right, let's talk about Chris Ward because I think we're running out of superlatives for him and a player that I'll openly admit wasn't sure when he came into Forest. He was criticised amongst the ter- terraces and, and including myself, but he's come good. Two in two for him. Nine goals in twelve. In fact, I've actually got a list of stats for Chris Wood. I'm going to save some till the end. But, but Sarah, how vital is he becoming for Forrest, given Taiwo's injury? He's leading the line, another character in the dressing room. He's been there in the Premier League. He's done it. And just just brilliant performance from him last night. Yeah, he's so that goal was so clever. Picking up the ball with his back to goal, the turn was so neat. And then the finish, to, to spot the gap first place was exceptional play but then to finish and to leave the goalkeeper flat-footed brilliant I don't think I don't think it it kind of got lost a little bit because of of how good Morgan Gibbs White was and how impressive the whole performance was that Chris Wood's goal kind of was like oh yeah Chris Wood scored again but it it was so clever so intelligent Um, he's on a real run at the moment full of confidence absolutely flying and it's all about getting the right service to him it's all about making sure he has the support because there's some times where he's living off scraps at times in previous games and he just doesn't get any help. If you give him the support and if you play to his strengths, you get the best out of him. I think he's thriving under Nuno. He, he, he seems like a, a Nuno type of player, which is a little bit ironic in that it was Steve Cooper that, that was really keen to get him in mm. and how it's, it's now Nuno that's actually getting the best out of him. 
even if a one was fit, and I, I, I can't say I was agree with the with the comment about a one being past it, but yeah, that's I, I think ridiculous. But and yeah, even if a one was fit at the moment, Chris Wood is first choice for me um, because he's he just fits better. It would be great if Tyro was fit because having more options again is so important. The more players you can chip in with goals and help out from off the bench especially at this stage of the season, you really need that. But Chris Wood is just a little bit ahead in the pecking order. Um, and if he can keep up the goal scoring streak between now and the end of the season, then all the better. And you wouldn't put it past him. Uh, the fact that he's been involved in relegation fights before, the fact that he was involved last season, but also at Burnley, he knows what happens. He knows what it's all about. He knows what you need to do. That counts for a lot as well. Uh, an experienced head and somebody who... He's just really calm, composed, does his job and does it very well. Um, the more he can keep that up, the better. Yeah, if Tywo's passed it, I must be one appearance in a charity <laughs> oh, yeah. football he's match. He's been and... injured all season, bless him. You know, it's not like he's 35. Anyway, and I, yeah, I, I get the point. I, the, th- the other thing about Chris Wood, I, I when, when we were talking, I was thinking how many strikers Forrest have signed in the past that are meant to be good and have flopped. Did, mm. and, and I don't know if my mind's playing tricks on me because we've had so many. Did Forrest at one time sign Ross McCormick or McCormack? Yes. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah. He, he lit it up for like Villa or Leeds or whoever he did. And then we got him and he was dreadful. I mean, I can't, growing up, you know, Championship, League One, Championship, the amount of strikers we thought would come and do the business for us and never did. And it's almost like the world's turned upside down because when, when, what was it? Was Chris Wood's clause was something ridiculous, wasn't it? If he makes like three appearances that we had to buy, we then had to pay 15 million yeah. quid or something like that. Don't quote me on it. And I remember thinking, crikey. And, you know, this is at the peak of the sort of um, the otherworldly spending that was going on that's put us into this re- situation. But anyway, we want to talk good news. But when that happened, I thought, wow. And it's and it's turned out to be an absolute blessing in disguise. And, you know, it makes you realise that, you know, we're often so far too quick to judge. Uh, you know, I'm, I know myself, I can include myself in that. He's just been <laughs> post-gas worthy sort of. I mean, the, the Boxing Day hat trick, like world class finishing. And I think we saw that with the header, you know, everyone's spe- Do you remember that um, Hernandez header. For um, no Chicharito <laughs> header for Manchester United when he headed it yeah, back. Yeah. I mean that's not scratch on the header against Palace. Um, and then last night, you know, Sarah described it so well. I'm just um, I'm just so enthusiastic about Chris Wood. It's absolutely mad. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I just from what from what I've heard as well, you know, he's a real leader in the dressing room. And I don't when I say the things I've said, I don't mean it in any way as disrespect to Chris Wood. But I don't think he's ever been seen as a dynamic goal scoring striker he scored 12 goals i think this season for us right mm. um and so it just it just massive credit to him and like i said i think he's really a key leader in the dressing room you see him in interviews and he's incredibly measured and calm and that's exactly what forest need and so um yeah brilliant the key we got Yes, you need a uh, you need a Chris Wood poster in the background or something, Max. You know, to add. Yeah, to my your, walls uh, are a bit bare, aren't they? I was just, uh, <laughs> just going to say, I'm probably. Oh, it's in fact, maybe all of ours. You never know. If yeah, someone's watching, yeah. they fancy doing us a Chris Wood poster, then then send it our way, and we'll have it up in Garibaldi Red HQ in no time. Um, you know, it is funny. So many people criticise him, and 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 including myself at times, and and he has just come good recently for Forrest and he's been such a key player. Uh, right, moving on to a, another kind of two standout performances, but more so wanted to highlight hudson Adoy rather than Alanga. At 72 appearances for Chelsea when he was there. hudson Adoy only scored four goals. He's made 22 appearances for Forrest and he's already scored five, so he's bettered that by one. Again, another player cuts inside. He's got that about him. And he knows what he's doing, doesn't he, Max? When you look at him and, and you just think that's a Premier League player right there, the money that Forrest paid for him just yeah. turning out to be almost a steal. The same as 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 even Morgan is. I know Morgan's price tag is slightly higher, but but Hudson Doy was quite a low buy and, and not a cheap buy. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but someone that's turned just just really good and now thriving under Nuno as well. Yeah. Look, for for, for as critical as I've been, sort of um for as critical and public as I've been about my criticism for 
uh, the spending of the club. I do think that the way that they spent the Brennan Johnson money was really good. And you look at someone like Callum hudson Odoi. What's really um, heart heartwarming is you know he was a, he Bayern Munich wanted to buy him for about ninety hundred million quid a few years ago. He's had this Achilles injury, which he's even come out and says he he doesn't think he'll ever get back to his peak. But I think Forrest's been the perfect club for him. You know he's he's he can be a real threat for us when he cuts in on his right foot. Um, yeah, it's just, it's great to see. And I think as he builds in confidence, so do Forrest. You know, this, our sort of journeys, I think, um, are on the same trajectory. Really encouraging. And again, really um, sort of relieved that he started as well as, as uh, Anthony Alanga. They're both different types of threats. You know, I think ball, with the ball at his feet, Callum Adoy is you know, a real threat, but the pace then in behind on the other side of Alanga is great. And so really hope that he stays fit. I always worry sometimes he just looks injured by the sort of the countenance on his face. You know, sometimes I think, God, oh, are you about to sort of, um, you know, slip, slip a disc or tear your hernia or whatever. But thankfully, he's sort of managing to get through. And I think, um, the, the, you know, the more games he plays, the better he's going to get and he's going to grow with Forrest. Yeah, for sure. Um, just wanted to touch on Matt Sells as well, Sarah, just quickly. Mm. Just great performance from him and almost, you know, steadied the ship. The goalkeeper situation was something that we've talked about for ages. It feels like it goes into that stuff I want to put away in a drawer in the summer and lock away for a while. Transfers, money, FFP, corners, set pieces. And and, and the goalkeeper situation can get thrown in there as well and shipped abroad somewhere. So I don't have to see it again. <laughs> about it. Um but 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 Sowers has really steadied the ship. The fans feel more confident with him in goal. The players do the back line in particular. And he made some excellent saves at times last night as well. Yeah, that save at 3-1 was, was so important. Yeah. A really, really good save as well. He, he did it so well. Um, he's just a, a good, steady presence, I think. And he, he's capable of pulling out those kind of saves. And they're, they're so important in such big games like that because... That it doesn't just affect the scoreline, it also gives the whole team a lift. And you can see that the defence take a lot from it, he takes a lot from it. The whole crowd does because it gets everybody going again. It gets cheered almost as much as a goal or a tackle or or um, a, a big moment in the game. It just, they matter. Um, and you need a goalkeeper that can pull out those kind of moments. He's certainly capable of that. I think his distribution is also really good. He's pretty good with the ball. And even when he's not, he's got, Murillo in front of him who you can pass the ball to and he'll just ping a pass forward and, and get you going again that kind of side of things is really important in the game defence goalkeeper being good on the ball being good with distribution because it can just help you get especially when you're trying to get on the front foot and play with a lot of intent you need everybody involved you need to start from the back um, and he does that it was quite funny that Matt Turner also got involved and, and got his booking last night he had a little bit of a contribution as well so I think he had a wry smile when he, he sat back down on the bench afterwards <laughs> it, it, I mean it really was a whole collective effort it was just one of those memorable nights um, I think the goalkeeper situation getting it sorted was so key and you can kind of look at January now and I think at the time I said oh no I think it'd be a waste of money signing another goalkeeper so I, I've definitely got egg on my face for that because it, it it's proved to be a good decision um, and hopefully it does solve it longer term now. Um, maybe the backup situation has to be looked at in the summer, but I think Matt Sells has got the number one shirt and he's, he's wearing it well. Yeah, many fans will probably say that what Matt Turner did last night was maybe the best thing he's done in a long That's time. That's harsh. That maybe, is yeah, harsh. Maybe. I know, I know what you're saying. I think Matt Turner, look, yeah, you know. And, he's uh, a good shot stopper, I'll yeah, say about Matt. Made, made, he's, he's made, made some really good saves. But, um, some of the stuff on Twitter is is hilarious. <laughs> like, uh, you know, just some of the yeah the retweets uh, of the video are, are fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Thankfully, we've got cells. Um, that's all I'll say on that one. Yeah. Um, let's let's look at the wider relegation battle and the wider picture now, and 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 how much it does for Forest, given the confidence. Max, we've talked on here a long time, mm. constantly asked the question about more and more. Do you think Forest will get relegated? But and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But last night, great performance, <sighs> highlights to pick out, key moments that makes you feel like Forest. Forest might just be okay, and, and maybe I am getting it too ahead of 
ahead of myself. But I, I, I just feel now that the side can take real momentum into this and you just never know what could happen, you know, at Spurs on um, on Sunday night it is. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about that is Spurs have, have looked um, pretty mediocre, I think, in the past past couple of games. You know, they, they only they re- only struggled to a victory over Luton. Uh, they drew against West Ham. Obviously, West Ham are a good side. But, you know, I, I do perhaps think that whilst Ange Postacoglu has been a breath of fresh air, whilst they play this sort of abounding football, um, I think maybe there's a... There's, a little bit too much hype around Ange Postacoglu and Spurs, you know, um, and at the minute anyway, or perhaps that that is running out. And I uh, look, they're favourites for the game. It would not surprise me one iota if they beat us comprehensively. Um, I'm not saying they're a bad team, but you know they have a really high line, don't they? I think it, you know it could be if we don't if we sort of sort these set pieces out and defend well, it could be a fascinating game end-to-end. You know, we've got the players that punish that high line that Postacoglu seems adamant on keeping. With fair play to him, that's his philosophy. So it could be a really interesting game, you know, in terms of the relegation battle. I think my reflections have sort of developed a little bit in terms of Luton. I've said on here how much I admire Luton and what they've done with all of the injuries and all the stuff around... Um, um, Tom Lockyer. Yeah. There is also a part of me that thinks, look, you know, if you can't um, stay up in a season where two of your relegation rivals get um, get points deductions, then you know, I'm sorry, but you, you deserve it, really. And um, it'd be interesting to see what happens with Everton. I think we're expecting to hear something latest on Monday. Um, so look, it's all there's so many balls up in the air. But like I said right at the beginning, that performance was so good in the first half it, for me, really sets a precedent for the rest of the season. I don't think there's any way the boys can go into the next game not feeling much more confidence back in their own ability in the way they play. Loads of different spinning plates, but um, I'm feeling much more confident than I was, you know, a few days ago. Let's put it that yeah. way. Sarah, you feeling good apart from, I've just realised you're probably going to have to get about, I'm just going to say the, the game's been moved now, hasn't it, to the Sunday, so you, you can get a train in a tube, can't you? Because... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes. that was a transport. You'll, yeah. You'll be I, all right. Yeah, just about, I think. It'll be a, a long day, but um, hopefully it's worth it. I, I think it, what Tuesday night is, is it's an opportunity. It's a chance to build and it's a chance to follow that kind of standard. And it's a blueprint. It's one that Forest have to use. It's one that they have to take going forward. As we said right at the start, it's all about building on it um, and not going back to old ways because Tuesday night was was reminiscent really and it's not all that long ago of the start of Nuno's tenure when Forest were really yeah. competitive in games it was like the Newcastle game it was like the Man United game it was it was very much that style of play and for some reason and I guess there's a lot of factors that went into it they veered away from that for a spell they've got to get back to playing that way use Tuesday night follow that up Spurs is going to be incredibly difficult, but I think what what is important in it is being competitive. If Forrest can go mm. there and be competitive and, and really be in the game, the result necessarily doesn't matter too much because, like Max said, Spurs are favourites. Mm. I think it, it, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough, but put in a good performance. Feel like you've... Um, had a say in the game in some kind of way, have have a another good, solid team performance, some good individual displays again. And then that sets up the next few games, which are the really important ones, Wolves at home, some massive away games. Then it, it doesn't dent the confidence. It doesn't dent the, the momentum and the spirits from Tuesday night. It, the result isn't the most important thing for me on, on Sunday. I think it's all about how Forest play and all about how they, they use Tuesday and then build on, on it going forward from there. Um, because the, the running is, there's some massive games there and some big opportunities, some games that you look at and think that it play like Tuesday night and that they're winnable um, and the gap then can grow and there'll be a little bit more breathing space and it can hopefully avoid any last day, last minute nerves uh, and just ease the situation a little bit because it was a massive relief on Tuesday you could kind of feel the 
the great big exhale of breath at the full time whistle, as well as the the celebrations, it it just took a weight off. Uh, I think off the players' shoulders as well, um, and probably off Nuno's. I'm sure he was feeling in the spotlight a little bit because of the results and the performances and and the criticism, and it, it just lifted. It lifted the the whole mood, um, changed everything. But but now it's about building on it and using that opportunity. Yeah, for sure. I woke up this morning with a spring in my step and for so long I've wanted to lie in dark rooms after the games and podcasts. <laughs> but maybe I'll go on a 10k run. I might, I, might, I might go and run a marathon this evening because I'm feeling that, <laughs> I'm feeling that gassed after Forest's uh, Forest win last night. Uh, right, that'll do us nicely. Max, thank you as ever. Enjoy whatever you're up to. Uh, you know, any Easter eggs to celebrate potentially? Or you talked about having mac and cheese last time. Have you got that tonight? Um, no, yeah. Last time I'd, I'd just eaten before I came on a, a really sweaty microwave mac and cheese, um, <laughs> and I don't have that. No, I've got I've got some Hello. I got I got Hello Fresh. Oh, very um, nice. So I'm going to cook something fancy this evening. And uh, yeah, I was the same as you, Max. This morning I was in work at four a.m. this morning, and um, n- you know, not because I'd been up all night on a bender. Uh, celebrating just because that's when I start work uh, this week and honestly I was I was a changed man you know, I felt like I was a forest evangelist I was sort of telling everybody about how great Morgan Gibbs White was um yeah yeah I, I made sure that the presenters knew that Marco Silva was forced into making three substitutions at half <laughs> in, in the first oh as just as just as he was saying that really good point we've lost him. timely I oh, know, yeah, timely. Don't worry, you never, don't worry. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's back, he's back. Um, you never know, Sarah, if HelloFresh want to sponsor our podcast, then they could. <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it, actually? Especially being, at, especially being at uni, I could do with a few free meals. There you uh, go. Right. Enough food chat. Uh, let's uh, end it there. As always, if you do enjoy, drop us a like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts because it really helps us. We will see you later on in the week for a preview for Spurs and then after on Monday back with our main episode. As Forrest gets a big emphatic win, two in two for Chris Wood, nine goals in 12. It's the first time he scored outside of the box for the first time since 2021. That was against Fulham. What a stat. Four points. Premier League, we'll have it back. Bye-bye.